What's up developers, I'm that one Unity dev, and today we'll be covering part 2 of how to make an atmospheric 2D game. We will be starting from where we last left off, so if you haven't already, you might want to check out part 1, where we cover everything up to this point. Although what we have already looks really cool, there are still a few tricks we can do to push it to the next level. This includes background and fog particles, parallaxing with Cinemachine, sound, and a few final tweaks. By the end of the video, we should have something that looks like this. Starting with the particles, we will be making three different types. The first two are small circular particles that will float around our scene. The only difference between the two is that one will have a trail. The final particle system will be the fog, which will hover slightly above the ground and tie everything together. Jumping into our drawing application, we will draw a couple sprites for the particles. For the floating particles, you will need a soft radial gradient in the shape of a circle. In Photoshop, you can just use a soft round brush, scale it up, and make a little white dot. We will be using white for all the particle sprites because once we get into Unity, we can use the particle system color settings to change the color to whatever you like. Next is the fog sprite. We will be creating a wispy white mass that resembles a cloud. I am using a cloud brush in Photoshop to make things a bit easier, but feel free to draw your own. For those using Photoshop, I will leave a link for this brush pack in the description. After our sprites are made, we can hop over to Unity and start setting up the particle systems. Just a small disclaimer before we dive in. When making particle systems in Unity, a lot of how it looks depends on the person creating it. There are a lot of settings to help you get the exact feeling you're going for. So I won't be going into much detail on my exact settings, but I will tell you what settings I'm changing and why. So with that out of the way, we'll start off with the circle particles. After importing the sprites we just created, I add a new particle system and check the texture sheet animation setting. I then change it from grid to sprite and drag in the circle particle. This will allow us to use sprites we made earlier in our particle system. I create a new sorting layer and put it below everything but the background gradient. I then set the sorting layer in the renderer settings. After that's done, I change the emission shape to a box and make it border our scene. This will spawn the particles inside the box's volume and make it easier to control where they spawn. After I'm happy with it, I adjust the speed, size, and color of the particles. I know that was quite a bit to take in, but the general idea is for it to slowly fade in, grow larger, and then fade out. I do a lot of tweaking of those settings to get it to look the way I want. You can try experimenting on your own to get something that looks good to you. After I'm happy with those particles, I duplicate it and move on to the trailed ones. First I add the noise setting and I look how the default settings look, so I don't change them. The noise setting will make your particles move more sporadic and make them seem like they have a mind of their own. I like to imagine them as lost little souls flying around our scene. I then add the trail setting. The trails are pink because they need to have a material assigned to them. To fix this, create a new material and assign it to the trail material in the particles renderer setting. I initially added the circle sprite to the materials texture I removed it later and left it blank because I liked how it looked without it. I then adjust the width and color of the trail. This makes the trail smaller than the particle, and by using a gradient with opacity, I make it fade towards the back of the particle. I continue to tweak it until I'm happy and move on to the fog. Although it adds a lot to our scene, the fog is actually really simple. First we will repeat what we did for the circles by creating a new particle system, adding the texture sheet animation setting, adding our fog spray, changing the emission shape to a box, and lastly changing the sorting layer to the particle layer we created earlier. After that's done, we can adjust the start speed to be quite slower and make the fog fade in and out while getting bigger. You can adjust the overall size and change the emission rate to control how much fog is in the scene. To get a better idea of how the final result will look, I put it into place and adjust the color to something that suits the environment better. After fidgeting with the color a bit more, the fog is done. Just don't forget to set all of your particles to pre-warm so you don't have to wait for them all to spawn when you hit play. Now that all the particles are done, let's move on to the parallaxing.
In case you don't know what parallaxing is, it creates depth in your scene by making things in the background move slower than things in the foreground. This makes things like the sky and background feel further away than say the grass or the player. Normally this effect is done through code, but we can cheat our way by using the Cinemachine package to accomplish the same thing. So let's import the Cinemachine package from the package manager. Once that's finished, navigate to the new Cinemachine window and create a 2D camera. This created a virtual camera object. In the inspector, you can see a bunch of settings we can use to our advantage. For example, we can assign the follow target to be our player character, and change the screen Y height to match what we had before. If you hit play, you will notice that the camera now follows the player. To create the parallaxing effect, we need our camera to be looking into 3D space, but to retain its 2D view. To fix this, go to your main camera and change it from orthographic to perspective. Normally this would mess everything up, but since some machine is telling the camera is 2D, it is keeping it locked to a 2D view. There is one small problem though. The camera is now slightly zoomed out. But no worries, if you change the field of view settings in the Sin Machine camera, you can line it back up. And that's all the setup you need for this parallaxing effect to work. To utilize this effect, all you need to do is change the Z position of certain background sprites. This is already affecting my circle particles because I had given the emission shape some Z depth. So now some of them appear further away than others. To further showcase the parallaxing effect, I created some rolling hills, and by changing their Z value, you can see that they look like they're in the distant background. With the parallaxing done, we can move on to the main thing that will sell your world as atmospheric, sound. Although it is usually the last thing on developers' minds, the sounds of your world will play a key role in selling all of these effects. Of course a player will have sounds for each action they perform, but the atmospheric magic really comes from the ambient sounds. This can be anything from water dripping, wind rustling, rodent scurrying, to the faint cries of an unknown enemy just waiting for their next victim. When making sounds, I tend to use a combination of techniques, whether it be making sounds in audacity, to finding free resources online for the more pesky sounds. I would show you how I made the sounds for this demo, but I would rather save myself the embarrassment. If you want a more in-depth guide on sounds, I recommend Blackthorn Prod's video where he goes over how to make sounds in Audacity and showcases just how important they are. I will leave a link in the description for those who are interested. With the sounds done, I'm pretty happy with the result. Using the same techniques we've already covered, I went a step further and added a few more background assets, jumping particles, grass animations, and a simple light flickering animation, just to polish things up. I really like the final look, and as you can see, it didn't take all too much effort. And with this, the series is done. It may not seem like much, but with a side-by-side -side comparison, these are all the techniques I used in my little light. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and maybe even learned a thing or two. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't, and leave a comment to show me what type of environments you guys come up with.